What is up, guys? Chase Oliver 68 here, bringing you my WWE Payback preview and predictions. Overall, my thoughts leading up to Payback. What can I say? It's just a simple card. Nothing really too intriguing on this card. My excitement is very low on this card. So we kick off with the kickoff show. Ha huh. Kickoff show. Get it? You know, because they're kicking off the pay-per-view with this. And you know what? I think it's a lame-ass name to call the pre-show a kickoff show. It's better than pre-show, but kickoff show... I don't know. I guess it could trick some idiots that, that will probably read it. Like when they're on Yahoo, they might think it's part of Sunday night game if WWE has a pay-per-view. So maybe some idiots will fall into it, but I just don't like the name in general. But Sheamus is taking on Damian Sandow. Honestly, I could give two shits that these two are wrestling. I honestly can. I thought this was an under-the-radar feud, but really they just dropped the ball with this feud. Sheamus and Damian Sandow, who cares who wins this match? It's most likely going to be Sheamus. If Damian Sandow wins, I'll be surprised as hell. I'll be fucking surprised. Up next, Dolph Ziggler versus Alberto Del Rio for the World Heavyweight Championship. In all honesty here, I can't fault the WWE's lack of build-up to this feud, mainly because Dolph Ziggler suffered a concussion. Concussions are serious things. They're not things to toy around with. If any of y'all had a concussion, you know what it's like to be concussed. It's, it's, it's hard to really function, really, with concussions, so... Honestly, this is, should be the opener of the show. It's going to be a good match. People are going to enjoy it. I think it would be a good opener. I see Dolph Ziggler retaining because Del Rio, he's like the failed Eddie Guerrero. They're trying to make, they're trying to replace Eddie Guerrero somehow, some way, because Eddie was so big for the company, especially in that heavyweight division. But they just can't. They can't. And, and Del Rio, he just doesn't have the charm that Eddie Guerrero does. Like Eddie Guerrero had a certain charm to him. Del Rio doesn't have that charm, so I expect Dolph Ziggler to retain here. We have Caitlyn versus AJ Lee for the Divas title, and all honesty, this feud, they flopped with it big time. It had a lot of potential going into it. I know that they did the secret admirer thing, and really, to be honest, they, they flopped really hard on it, uh, with Biggie Langston and AJ having to cut a really bad promo, and all honesty, I, I just felt that they really flopped with this feud. They could have done a lot better job. I mean, it it's okay for Diva standards. I mean, it's, it's probably one of the better feuds we've seen from the Divas in a while, besides the Divas of Doom, but th it's hard to replace the Divas of Doom. So, in all honesty, I don't care who wins this match personally, but if I have to make a prediction, I think they're going to finally give AJ Lee the belt. Uh, and I felt like for the Secret of Myra thing, this could have been, you know, a chance for another superstar to come back and you had that superstar support Caitlyn because we already know AJ Lee's going to have Biggie Langston. So it would be good for Caitlyn to have a male that, you know, supports her and all that other stuff. So, yeah, whatever. Let's move on forward. Dean Ambrose 6 on Kane for the U.S. title. It's a throwaway match. It's just a match to help Dean Ambrose get over some more. He's going to get a win over Kane. That's all that matters to me. Prediction, Dean Ambrose, and really, that's all I have to discuss about this match. The Shield versus Randy Orton and Daniel Bryan. Now, Daniel Bryan is the hottest thing in WWE. He cannot get pinned in this match. He gets pinned in this match. WWE pretty much is messing up Daniel Bryan because, you know, there's rumors out there, and I'm not going to 100% believe them, but most of the time, some of the rumors do come true. Daniel Bryan might be going for a WWE championship. Okay, if Daniel Bryan's going for a WWE championship and he loses in this match with the Shield, how can I, you know, get, I mean, gets pinned by like a Seth Rollins or Roman Reigns? How am I, uh, uh, you know, how am I invested of seeing this guy become WWE champion? How am I going to believe this guy can beat John Cena or Ryback, whoever the WWE champion is at the time? Uh, I say you either have Orton get the pinfall here or you have uh, Daniel Bryan and Orton argue a little bit, which leads to, you know, a no contest because they start beating the shit out of each other and we just get a no contest out of it. I mean... Yeah, I, I don't know what they're going to do. Orton either needs to get a pin or disqualification needs to happen because they, they can't have Daniel Bryan get pinned in this match. That's just the reality of it all. But uh, I have the Shield just walking out of the tag team titles somehow, some way, and probably by disqualification because you also have to kind of protect Randy Orton a little bit. I mean, he's not as over as Daniel Bryan, but he is still a key player in – feuds that you want to do in the near future, so you may want to try to keep him safe as well. Uh, the Triple Threat IC title match. Now, originally, Fun Don Go was supposed to be in this match, but he got a concussion too. Like, everyone's getting a concussion. I, I believe Tamina fucking Snuka, she got a concussion. Like, shit, man. Like, what's with all these concussions, WWE? You gotta check that out. Uh, really, to be honest here, Dropped the belt onto Curtis Axel. Curtis Axel replaced Bondongo. The Miz and Wade Beard are in this match. And really, to be honest here, 
Just give it to Curtis Axel. He needs something. You're already giving this Triple H stuff to him. Might as well just have him be IC champion. Might as well. So that will at least we know he's the IC champion. I mean, sure, when he wins a match, no one will give a shit, but at least give him the IC title belt because Wade Barrett should be a guy that's going for the championship. I mean, he's one of the few Brits that you have that's capable enough to become you know, world champion, and a lot of the British people, uh, the UK, I, I don't know what to call y'all, um, I know that sounds rude of fuck as me, I know a lot of people are going to be upset about it, but I don't know what to call y'all, but a lot of the Brits out there do want to see uh, a guy like Wade Barrett, they want to see one of their own represent them, and you know, you guys go on to the UK tour pretty damn soon, I believe, like, I think it's in fall they actually go to the UK tour, but nonetheless, I mean, come on. Wade Barrett's a guy that has capabilities. Like, no one's asking to make him a five-time world champion. People are just asking him to hold the WWE Championship for a good while. And I agree with them. So, move Wade Barrett up the card. The Miz is another guy also that I hope moves up the card soon enough. This guy could be really key, especially in the fall time, for you. If you need a, a new main eventer to face off against your current champion, you have the Miz in that. So, hopefully, <laughs> Miz and Wade Barrett move on from the mid-card scene and they finally get boosted back up to the main event scene, especially The Miz. I mean, he's a former WWE champion, a guy who main evented WrestleMania 27. And Wade Barrett, you guys were hard pushing the fuck out of this guy, and he has not resulted into anything. So, yeah, that's that's pretty much my thoughts there. Now we get on to Chris Jericho versus CM Punk. Now, there's three options that I want to see happen. One option is you have CM Punk do wrestle this match. Yes, you have CM Punk actually wrestle the match. You have CM Punk come, wrestle the match, he loses to Chris Jericho, causing him to turn, like, causing Paul Heyman to turn on him. CM Punk faces Brock Lesnar at a SummerSlam and hopefully gets a big-time win there. That's the only way I'll accept CM Punk coming back. Or, option two, you keep him off TV still for a long-ass time, and you have Brock Lesnar come out and attack Chris Jericho. That way, Jericho can go do his Fozzie tour. You have Brock Lesnar establishing that he's a super-duper badass still, because Let's face it, that last Extreme Rules match with Brock Lesnar, that uh, Steel Cage match, it did not help Brock Lesnar whatsoever. He looked like a bitch for most of the match. And, you know, this guy's supposed to be looking like a goddamn monster. But in all honesty, uh, Brock Lesnar, to be honest, he, he has to be looking as dominant as possible. Why not with Chris Jericho? Beat the shit out of Chris Jericho. And then you have it out like a Survivor Series or any fall pay-per-view. And you have a Jericho-Lesnar match. That way, he's really built up towards WrestleMania. Then, the third option is, you have it where Jericho and Paul Heyman planned this all along. They're trolling us. They're laughing. They're giggling. And Jericho ends up, you know, joining Heyman's group for whatever fucking reason. I know that third option's way out there. It's way left field. But it's just something to think about. Because it's just like, it seems like they they planned this. And they knew it was at Chicago. It was like, it would be funny to, to fucking fuck with all you fans, you know, blah, 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 and Jericho changes his gimmick, because really this current Chris Jericho we're getting is pretty damn bad, so yeah, those are my third options, but if the match does happen, like I said, I want Chris Jericho to win, mainly just to have it where, you know, CM Punk pretty much starts doubting it, like where Paul Heyman doubts CM Punk, and causes Punk to become a babyface, because let's face it, people, CM Punk is definitely a babyface, he's not playing heel, he's not playing heel, so yeah, let's move on forward, so we get the three stages of pussy match. I'm not even calling this three stages of hell. This is pussy shit right here. We got a, a fucking lumberjack match. Oh, that's so hardcore. A fucking tables match. None of y'all are the Dudley boys. And an ambulance match. Okay. See, the thing about ambulance match, they can be good matches, but only if you're a high flyer. High flyers excel at ambulance matches because you can do cool stunts off the ambulance. None of these two are high flyers. None of these two are people that are just like, fucking, uh, like, people that can just go out there and make a hardcore match work, I mean, really, to be honest, like, an ambulance match, you need some big stunts in there, I'm sorry, I'm just not really excited uh, for the ambulance match, and how I see this going, I see John Cena winning the Lumberjack match, because of what happened on last night's Raw, uh, two, I mean, not last night's Raw, uh, Raw on Monday, I can see that Ryback winning the tables match, because he's been putting people through tables, now, the ambulance match, let's be basic, people. John Cena's winning this damn match. I think he's going to win this damn match. And it's, to me, I feel Ryback should be the guy to win this match. I mean, in all honesty, Cena doesn't need a belt. He's his own belt. Cena is his own belt. 
He 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 he's a championship in his own right. He can do whatever the fuck he wants without a belt. I mean, he's not like a Ryback. Because after Ryback win, does not win this match, what's next for Ryback? There's nothing for Ryback. You obviously turn Ryback heel for a reason. And it would be great to, you know, have Ryback be WWE champion based off against Daniel Bryan. This would be a great storyline. The, the, the underdog Daniel Bryan, the new Daniel Bryan that's ferocious, doesn't want people to, you know, you know, especially like, you know, Daniel Bryan's character right now, he's trying to, he's trying to show that he's not weak, that he's a strong force in this company. And then you have Ryback, the guy who took out John Cena in, in a three stages of, Hell match that the WWE will label it as. And you have him, and, and he took Cena to the absolute limits at a last man standing match. I mean, that would be a great storyline. I mean, Cena and Brian, don't get me wrong. I do want to see a Cena and Brian match because this that's a fresh matchup that we haven't seen. But also, I feel for Daniel Bryan's sake, a character, just for a character's sake of Daniel Bryan, you, you put him in this type of match with a Ryback. So I hope Ryback wins. Because I feel Ryback and Brian, and I don't care if Ryback holds the belt for a long time. I just want Ryback just to hold the belt, just in general. Because, obviously, you turn them heel for a reason. I, there has to be a reason why you turn them heel. And if he does not complete that ultimate reason, Ryback's character is a fail. And he's going <laughs> to ultimately do jack shit. He's going to ultimately do jack shit. He will just be a boring heel. And, hell, maybe that boring heel will face a boring face in Randy Orton. I mean, the role should be reversed. It should be heel order embracing face right back, but I guess we're not going to get that. But whatever. It, it, it is what it is. If Cena wins, nah, expect the same old shit. But Ryback wins. I expect some good shit to happen to WWE. But anyways, guys, what are your payback preview? What are your payback predictions? Comment down below your predictions. Uh, send a video response if you want to. I'll check out that video and like it, and it'll be shared on my Twitter feed. Uh, follow me on Twitter, actually, at ChaseOliver68. If you guys like me, you can subscribe by clicking the little icon or down below. Thumbs up this video, and that's pretty much it. Hope you guys enjoy your payback. What are your thoughts heading into the pay-per-view? Uh, I'm out of here. Enjoy your Friday. Be safe. Don't do anything stupid. Peace!